guys, welcome to How To Home right here on Amazon Live. I am Kelsey Nixon and I'll be your host. We're gonna have so much fun. Every episode of How To Home is gonna focus on food, family, um, home and fun. We're gonna do a lot of really great stuff. I like the idea of kicking off every episode with a recipe. And that's what I do. I'm a cooking show host, I'm a cookbook author. I love to cook. Um, but I wanna get I wanna get into this. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and throw on an apron, right? We're gonna be at the dining table today, we're gonna be wrapping some gifts today, and all along I'm going to be sharing my products stuff happen. So what's so cool about Amazon Live is if you guys go ahead and click follow right there, you see that button? Um, you can see anytime I'm going to be sharing ideas in the home and food space. And as I go throughout my segments, you guys can shop along with me in the carousel below. So all of the products that I'll be using today are right there for you to click through and check out. So I'm always sharing the things that I love most that are tried and true in my home, in my kitchen, and can't wait to share some of those with you. All right, so holidays are just around the corner, right? The whole theme of today is holiday prep. We've got just a few days before the big Christmas holiday. And while that might look a little differently this year, we are still going to celebrate. And I don't know about you, but one of the things I look forward to most every year is the food on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Day. And I'm gonna be making a balsamic pork tenderloin. That's my oven beeping saying that it's preheated. <laughs> so our oven's ready to go. But I'm making this roasted balsamic pork tenderloin. And what's really great about this is it's a sheet pan recipe. And I share lots of sheet pan recipes on all of my channels. But a sheet pan recipe clearly needs an awesome sheet pan. And so this is my favorite sheet pans to use. They are the Nordic Ware sheet pans. I am not the only person that loves them. When it comes to sheet pans, Nordic Ware is the best reviewed sheet pan on Amazon. It's amazing. And I used their aluminum sheet pans for years and just started using their nonstick sheet pans. And th these are the ones that are that golden color. And what I love about them is that cleanup is even easier. So whether you're baking or making a dinner on a sheet pan, it really just cleans up so beautiful. And honestly, my husband's the person who's happiest about that because in our home, I do the cooking and he does the dishes. So all of this meal is gonna come together on this sheet tray, so minimal dishes. And one of the things I love most about it is that it looks as good as it tastes. It's such a beautiful recipe. And if you want the recipe, you guys can go ahead and screenshot it just like that. And you'll have all of the instructions there, or you can search for it as well and it should pop up. But you'll notice that that balsamic glaze makes the pork look so beautiful. We've got all of these fall inspired winter vegetables on there as well. Enough talking, let's get going. So I've got my pork tenderloin here, and what's great about a pork tenderloin is you can really find a pork tenderloin at nearly any grocery store or market. And I find that it's really, um, it's not a really heavy flavor, so whether you're feeding kids, I've got three young kids myself, or I don't know anybody that doesn't like a pork tenderloin. It's a really great um, mild cut of meat that takes on flavor really well. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna season this up. You'll notice that I took a paper towel and I just dried it off. And the reason I like to do that is it allows your ingredients to adhere to it really well. Now you may be wondering, why do you have two cutting boards here? And that may look a little crazy, but this is what I call a gel board, and it's made by OXO. It's fantastic, and this is kind of a system I use in my kitchen all the time, where anytime I'm preparing protein, I do it on this specific cutting board. And I like it because it's plastic, it's a really hard plastic, durable, I can throw this in the dishwasher, it cleans up beautifully, I don't have to worry about cross-contamination. And so I'll take, my spring-loaded tongs, and now that this is initially prepped, I'm gonna put that right in the center of my sheet tray. Now this can go straight to the dishwasher or the sink, and I'm still prepped and ready to go with my second cutting board. So I'm not having to wash a cutting board in between. Now, 
I mentioned how much I liked my OXO cutting board. I also love this. This is an Epicurean cutting board and I love it. It's a composite cutting board, which means that it's, it's kind of more similar to a wood cutting board, but you'll notice it's really thin. There's two sides, one with grooves in case you're slicing proteins or something. And I love how it has these feet which makes it so that it doesn't slide around. I don't know if you've ever been slicing or dicing and had your cutting board move around, but it, not only is it dangerous, it's just really frustrating and it makes it difficult to do those tasks. But these cutting boards are fantastic because they also go into the dishwasher. I've had this one nearly five years and it still looks fantastic. They're not heavy, so they're easy to maneuver from one place to the other, which is also fantastic. And Epicurean, which you can get right here on Amazon and in the carousel below, they also sell a product called Board Butter. And if you've had your Epicurean boards for a while and they look like they need a refresh, this is a great product. I just used it on mine and it looked good as new. All right, so now I want to talk about this glaze. It's a balsamic glazed pork tenderloin. And what that is gonna give us is some real depth of flavor. It's gonna be a little bit sweet and I'm adding honey to start with, about three tablespoons of honey. And you can go ahead and use measuring spoons or I've made this so many times, you guys, I just eyeball it now. This is one of those recipes I make over and over, especially in the fall and winter months. I'm also gonna add three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. My cookbook is actually called Kitchen Confidence, and I believe in really giving people the confidence that once you have made something a couple of times, there's no need to pull out those measuring spoons and cups. If you're baking, absolutely, but when you're making a recipe that you know and love, there's nothing better than feeling like it's a back pocket recipe, like you just know how to do it. So that's kind of how I feel with this glaze. Now I'm going to add about a tablespoon of whole grain mustard to this recipe. Whole grain mustard is one of those ingredients that I seem to always have on hand in my refrigerator. I use it for vinaigrettes, for marinades, for sandwiches. It's just a really good ingredient. And you'll notice I use this cute little spatula to um, pull my mustard out there. I like these guys. These actually would be great stocking stuffers. Um, also got this on Amazon. All right, so I've got my vinegar, I've got my honey, and now I'm gonna use some olive oil as a base for this. Uh, marinade or this glaze. I like taking my olive oil out of the bottle that I purchased it in and putting it in a little uh, glass jar. This is something I always have at my station, if we'll call it. Um, I have a pepper grinder, I have a little bowl with kosher salt, and then I have my olive oil dispenser as well. All of those I got on Amazon, um, and I use these multiple times a day, every day. It's like they're always set up right near my cooking station. The last thing I wanna to add to my glaze is another product that I really like. I'm actually gonna add just a little bit more olive oil, but it's garlic. Now, look, I went to culinary school. I love to cook as much as the next person, but I think that when it comes to annoyances in the kitchen, Smashing and peeling garlic may just be the one that puts me over the edge. So I have found this product that I really like. They are these garlic cubes. And they're so great. Each cube is about one clove of garlic. And so I keep these in my freezer all the time. And if I need two cloves of garlic in a recipe, I just pop those right in. They're a really, really awesome product to have. And I um, use them all the time. They also make them in ginger, they make them in basil. Another one of those staples that's always in my freezer. Oh, this is already smelling super, super fragrant and delicious. Now I'm not gonna worry about putting salt and pepper in my marinade because I've got salt and pepper on my pork already and I will go ahead and season my vegetables with salt and pepper as well. But what I wanna do is take a small bowl and you'll notice these are great, um, they're anchor glass mixing bowls and I have a set of these that there's about I think eight or nine bowls and they go from big to little. This is actually one of the littlest ones and I'm gonna take just a little bit of this marinade and this is what I'm gonna use for my pork. Now I wanna find my basting brush. Here it is, got it. This is made by OXO and I really like this as well. is such a great company for um, basic tools in the kitchen. But I'm going to take this and all of this glaze is gonna go right on top of my fork. And the brush just helps 
me get it evenly, but know that I am a very much a home cook, right? And a messy kitchen is a happy kitchen and um, nothing needs to be too perfect. In fact, I have a joke that I share often is that if something comes out not looking perfect or exactly how you want it to look, just call it rustic and you fooled everybody. You bake that apple pie and it looks a little rough, well, that's a rustic apple pie and everyone, they will leave you forever. So um, you can put that tip in your back pocket. So now separated that, I don't have to worry about this being contaminated with the pork. And now I can use the rest of this marinade for the veggies that I'm going to prep. All right, so let's move on to these veggies and clear some of these ingredients out. This is a system I like to use that I call my bin din system. And it might sound a little silly or crazy, but I'm obsessed with organizing my refrigerator. And actually these are the bins that I use. Um, and I have a bin for each day of the week that I plan to cook. And I typically cook five nights a week. And so um, it depends on if this is Sunday, then this would be my Sunday bin. And I take all of my fresh ingredients that I need for the recipe that day and I keep them stored in this bin. So I'm gonna pull these ingredients from there. We are going to use a red onion. Let me grab my knife. And I gotta talk about my knife. Every good home cook needs a great knife. And I, when it comes to a knife, the best advice I have is to use a knife that feels best in your hand so that, you know, it depends. I've got really small hands and so I like using a shorter blade. This is actually just a five inch knife. It's a Wusthof knife. You can get it right here on Amazon in the carousel below. It's a Santoku knife and I find that it's really great for cutting vegetables. Because of the shorter blade, I feel that it's easier to maneuver. So if you're going to invest in a knife, I recommend really trying a few before you make that investment. Um, but for me, for many years now, I just keep coming back to this Wusthof knife. I really love it. So to get into this onion, I just halved it. Anytime you're cutting big vegetables, you wanna do everything you can to create a flat surface. That's gonna be the easiest way to break it down. In this case, I wanna also pull out the core but nothing's too precious. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and essentially rough chop it. This is another tool I love you guys. This is made by the same company that makes my cutting board, Epicurium, and it's called a bench scraper. And it's a great way to transfer ingredients from your cutting board to wherever they're headed next. Now I did not anticipate getting teary with you today, but this onion is pungent. Woo! My goodness, whoo. I used to wear contact lenses and I never had a trouble with onions. And then um, I stopped wearing con contact lenses and I, I am the weakest person in the world when it comes to slicing up an onion. So forgive my tears. All right, so this is gonna go in here. Let me get this. Next, let's talk about the other veggies we're gonna use. We're gonna use some Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna use my kitchen shears. Kitchen shears are another really great tool to have in the kitchen. And I'm gonna use about half of this bag. When you're prepping veggies for a sheet, uh, sheet pan dish or meal, you just want to try and get them to be all about the same size. That's really what we're going for. My goodness, that onion, Woo! It's really something. So I'm just taking off the core there, having these, and they're about the same size as my pieces of onion as well. Feel free to ask any questions that you have in the chat. My helper Megan is in there and can answer any questions for you. We've listed all the product that we're using. And remember, if you guys are enjoying the show, to click that follow button, you can be notified anytime I do an episode of How to Home. All right, so this is all garbage. Now that we've got our Brussels sprouts in there, let's talk about some butternut. I love butternut squash this time of year. And if there's one ingredient you're going to buy pre-chopped, 
it is butternut squash because it is such a pain to break down. So if you find it free chopped like this, I highly recommend getting it. Lucky for me, they are right about the same size as those onion pieces and my Brussels sprouts. So this is gonna go right in here. I actually don't think I'll need that second bag. And then we're gonna do some apples, some honey crisp apples, which is gonna be a really delicious kind of sweet um, element with our veggies. Same thing, see how I wanna create a flat surface and then put that flat down? It's a great way to do that. And same thing, same size. We don't want them to be too small and that's because we want everything to cook evenly. And at the same rate. I mentioned that we eat with our eyes first, and that's one thing that's so great about this recipe is that because of the apple and because of the butternut and because of the Brussels sprouts, you have so much color going on, and it really is just very, very pretty. All right, so now that I have got my veggies in this bowl, remember I've got that delicious marinade at the bottom there. I wanna make sure everything is coated beautifully. And since I didn't salt and pepper the marinade or the glaze, I'm going to add some now. Nothing makes you feel like a chef at home more than a good pepper grinder and a bowl of kosher salts. Talk about cooking from the hip, adding a little here, adding a little there. But you can see right away just how much color is in this dish. I've got the red from the apples, the green from the Brussels sprouts, which makes it perfect for that holiday meal. And then we are simply just going to add this to our sheet pan. Now, if I wasn't using a nonstick sheet pan, I would want to coat it with aluminum foil or parchment paper. But because I'm using that Nordic Ware nonstick sheet tray, I'm not as worried about it because cleanup will still be a breeze. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe you already have um, some aluminum sheet trays that are great, but it might be worth investing in a nonstick one. It's been a game changer for me this year and I've really enjoyed having it. All right, so now we have got this all ready to go. It's really simple. We've got all color there. The glaze is coated in the veggies. The glaze is coated on the pork tenderloin. I want to roast this for about 20 minutes. The internal temperature I'm looking for is 140 degrees. And I feel like a lot of home cooks feel intimidated by cooking meat at home. And if you are one of those people, the best thing you can invest in is a great digital thermometer. So I really love um, this one. It's fantastic. And what we're going to cook this to is 140 degrees today. So we'll start at 20 minutes. We'll check the internal temperature, see where we're at and pull it out, let it rest for a bit and then dive in. All right, next I want to share with you guys something really fun. Whether you're keeping the holidays super simple this year or you are, um, you know, able to have some family members there. I always enjoy a little bit of an appetizer. And this is the funnest way to do it. So I have what I call my spinning snack board. And this is fun. I get a lot of questions about this. I tend to share this often in my content. Um, but it is essentially a Lazy Susan cutting board or serving board. And so I have just done a really basic charcuterie where I've got some salami sticks, I've got some um, pepperoni, some cheddar, some gruyere, I've got um, some bread, some apples, I've got some delicious candied pecans in there, a um, couple of different colors of grapes, some pita chips, and some at the center. To me, this is a really basic way to put together a snack board. And we'll actually put up something for you guys that you can screenshot, kind of the basics for putting together a charcuterie board or a snack board supper, if you will. 
If it's Friday and you don't want to order pizza, which trust me, most Fridays I do want to order pizza, this is a great thing to do to put together for your family. Um, kind of clean out the refrigerator, pull out the fruit that you've got, the cheese, the meats, and let everybody go to town. By sticking this right in the center of your dinner table, it makes it almost interactive so that um, whether it's your family members or your friends, everyone can kind of, you know, if you want the cheddar cheese, you just spin it right around. Now, if you are hosting larger groups, maybe not now, but at another time, I gotta share with you my other favorite serving boards. This is really great for a smaller group, but I love these Etu home boards for a larger group, and I wanted to show them to you because you can get them on Amazon as well. What's great about them is they have two sides. This is a more rustic side, and this is a more modern or smooth side. And so you've got two different approaches that you could take for making a really delicious snack board. So you'll see that it's larger. So I would do the same thing. I would pull out maybe two or three bowls of dips, whatever it may be. Maybe you're doing a, an epic veggie board. You've got an avocado dill dip and you've got a ranch dip um, and maybe you've got a hummus. And then you just fill those veggies in all around. It makes such a beautiful presentation for an appetizer. All right, so this is fun to share. Um, while we let that roasted pork tenderloin work its magic in the oven for about 20 minutes, I wanna move on to sharing something in the home. So I'm gonna take my apron off since I'm good to go here, and I wanna share with you guys how to set the perfect holiday table. So for me, I enjoy setting the table almost as much as I enjoy cooking the meal. To me, it's one of those ways to really just set the stage for your guests. And I said we eat with our eyes first. I think we do a lot of stuff with our eyes first, right? And when you walk in to a beautiful room set with a table, it really just sets the mood. So I enjoy doing this for every holiday and I wanna share with you some essentials that I use when decorating any sort of holiday table, whether it's the Easter holiday, someone's birthday, it's Christmas, or New Year's. I'll show you how I'm gonna take the Christmas table and turn it into a New Year's table by swapping out just a few things. So first things first, I did share my table. This is my kitchen studio space and I just moved in, I just got this table. It's fantastic, it's a great price, it comes with a bench, and then I also shared the chairs as well. I think it's kind of this rough meets modern. Um, let's talk about some tips for setting the table. First off, you want to either get a runner or a tablecloth. In this case, I want to play with the rustic meets modern. I shared that with you. It's great because it can be used for so many different occasions, whether it's a weeknight dinner or it is a more formal occasion, and it just kind of sets the base. If you're not Tablecloth. I also like using charger, essentially kind of a base for your um, your plate setup, your dinner table setup. I have these gold chargers. I have had them for years, years, at least five years. I bought 12 of them and I use them over and over again. And once you're done, I just simply wipe them down. Um, you don't ever eat directly on them, but it becomes a base. Those gold ones are so great. I feel like you can dress them down and still have them playful, but also make them very, very formal. I also shared some really beautiful stoneware green plates. Green has been one of my favorite colors to incorporate into my decorating this year, and I love um, these plates. I like having a dinner plate and then a salad plate, and then on top of that, I like to do a little place card with a napkin. Now, the napkins, I gotta talk about these. These are so cool. They are the brand is you can get them here on Amazon, and I just kind of fell onto them. Like, I, I discovered them accidentally, but they're a really thick napkin that you don't have to launder. So it is disposable, but it feels really nice. So I don't know about you, but at my family dinner table, we are tearing off the paper towels most often for, for um, a napkin at dinner. But if you're wanting that to feel a little bit more elevated, these are so beautiful. And not only do I use them in the kitchen, I also use them in the bathroom. So if people are coming over for a special occasion and they go in to wash 
a very luxurious experience to reach for a towel like this. Now I've also taken something from the centerpiece, just a few sprigs of invites some of that holiday spirit and sets the scene. Let's talk about a few other things on this table that I love. These candlesticks are so beautiful. Um, a great find, I talked about how I like that rustic meets modern, and I really like this. You've got a black base um, with the gold up top here. These also come in all gold, but I liked for the space that I'm working in, I liked the black and the gold combo, but check those out. They're a really good price. Comes two in a pack, a larger one and a smaller one, and I just find those to be so beautiful for setting the table. Let's talk about this centerpiece. So I love a centerpiece, but I don't ever like getting too elaborate. I always wanna be able to see the person sitting across from me. So lots of times I'll focus on something that's lower or shorter in scale. So I just picked these up on the market. They're essentially two bundles of pine, um, different types of pine and greens in here, and I tied them together with this red, um, really beautiful, and I, I linked this for you below in the carousel, but this is a great ribbon. I feel like it's modern, um, but also kind of homey at the same time. And then I put two little bells here on top and I've got the berries. So this is a really simple way to do a centerpiece. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna swap a few things out and make this appropriate for you. Call out the matte um, silverware. We don't eat. I'll link some glass goblets for you guys. I love a glass goblet. We're not wine drinkers, but I like having a really beautiful glass at the table. And my kids just think this is the greatest. They know that when they come to the dinner table and the goblets are there, it's a special occasion. Um, all right, so let's talk about how we can swap this out very simply to make this Christmas table ready for New Year's since those are So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out, let's first start with the centerpiece here. So I'm going to balls and this ribbon. I'm gonna pull out the red from the tablescape and I'm gonna incorporate black. And black and gold is gonna be what's gonna pull our New Year's table together. So these red berries out and you'll notice I linked some berries for you guys. You could get fresh berries or you could just use a faux berry, especially if you're using um, fresh greens. I think it's easier to incorporate a faux berry and you'll have everybody fooled. So you'll notice these were just two, just two bundles of greens and I'm just going to tie them together with a knot. And this ribbon, I like that it comes in the two separate colors and I can use both for the holiday. Now, instead of the red berries, I'm actually gonna use some frosted pine cones, which to me speak to the winter that's going on, but not to holiday. Making them very easy. And since it is New Year's, if you're wanting to incorporate a little bit of metallic bottle, this would be so great for this. I'm going to pull those out. I'm going to swap this guy out. And I'm going to use in and I'm there, which is going to be so fun um, for people to celebrate. I know I have grand plans of. Um, maybe going around the dinner table and sharing maybe a resolution for the year and after you share that, you get to use your notes maker. Who knows? With young kids, that might be a terrible idea. I also want to show you guys that for the Christmas dinner and then on the other side are these gold stars. And this is what I'm going to use for my New Year's thing. So I'm able to use the name tags twice 
especially if you're celebrating with your immediate family this year, easy way to do this. Isn't that cute? pretty against confetti to be quite honest but if you want confetti because it is here I recommend this jumbo confetti it's a little easier to manage and it's kind of hard. all right there you have it couple of changes you can turn this whole thing oh i want to show you one more thing to use the noisemakers here i like to throw the of my centerpiece and i think that that metallic element is really fun but my candlesticks still work my burlap runner still works my plates even still work so this is a really fun way to mix things up all right with and our meal cooking away in the oven, let's go ahead and talk about families. How are we going to capture those holiday memories this year? Other holiday memory books that I have found and really love. I think it's a great way in remembering the season and making those memories. I don't know about you guys, but as a mom, I've got an eight-year-old, a four-year-old and an eight-month-old. And it's so important to me that we have memories of the holidays. And I hope that my kids can think back on the holidays and think of the traditions that we had as families. So this is a really fun book. It's called Our Christmas Story. And I found this on Amazon this year. And um, I just thought it was so beautiful. It's something we can pull out every year and it captures Christmas memories for 10 years. So I have an eight year old. So the thought of him coming back to record his Christmas memories in this book for the next 10 years, by the time he's 18, he'll be ready to graduate. Um, so I love it. So in here you can put your family's name and it's really uh, beautifully designed by this artist. It's the first thing is there's a page for Christmas traditions. So I feel that each year we can go ahead and list our traditions. Like a new tradition that we started this year was um, on Thanksgiving evening, we walk, we drove around and found there was, uh, what was it? Something like 29 days until Christmas. So we spotted 29 homes with Christmas lights already. So that was something my kids really enjoyed this year. Or maybe it's getting... Christmas PJs on Christmas Eve, um, or maybe it's seeing Santa Claus, whatever it may be, this is a great place to record those traditions. Then from there, you can put the year here, I put 2020, and this is something we'll fill out on Christmas together. Favorite Christmas time moment this year, uh, Christmas treats we made, a memorable meal shared this season. So I like the idea of incorporating my kids here. This says Christmas parties we attended, not many this year. Um, favorite Christmas song, how we decorated our home for the holidays. And then this is a place to record Christmas Eve, what you did on Christmas morning. And then I love this spot, it's what we're grateful for. And whether you wanna include a photo from your family or you wanted, I probably have my kids draw something. My kids love art. So I love the idea of them each drawing a picture of what they're grateful for. There's more special gifts received. And then here's another place for a photo. We included meeting a COVID Santa where there's plexiglass in there. And so that was a fun place to record that memory. And then it moves on to, um, you've got some blank pages here. So if you wanted to do more photos or you wanted to have your kids draw or trace their handprints, whatever it may be, that's one year. And then this goes on for 10 more years of Christmas memories. I just thought that was such a sweet book um, and something I look forward to pulling out with my kids. Now, the next memory book is something that we have done for a handful of years. This is our family photo album with our family Christmas cards each year. So going back to the first year that my husband and I sent Christmas cards, we were living in New York, we have just gone through and put all of those cards in a little book. And my kids get a kick out of looking at these. This is the first year my son was born. We do the front of the card, the back of the card, and this is just a really fun thing to pull out each year, knowing that um, they get to put 
that year's Christmas card in the book. So this is just a really simple red photo album. Um, anyone can pick one of these up. You can add pages easily, but I love this being something that we return to year after year. Okay, this next one, while not Christmas related, is New Year's related. Now my son Oliver, who's eight, he has had so much fun starting this. It is a time capsule. Um, it's really cute. It says a keepsake for my future self. Right here it says, hello, future self. <laughs> um, the first thing we did is we filled out this fun little book. So he went through and listed his age, his height, his likes and dislikes, his favorite animal, three things that he wants to remember, and just had so much fun filling out this little book. Now we're in the process of going through and it comes with these little tags. And you can tag certain things throughout the year. So you see a face mask is obviously something that we're gonna remember about 2020. So as he finds things to put in his little box, he can attach a tag, which is really fun. There's also a little envelope here for mementos from the year. So whether that's tickets or report cards, whatever it may be. Letter to my future self, a letter to someone else, someone special. There's a little how-to guide in here that kind of walks you through the whole process. And then um, this is one element I thought was really great. There's this sticker to officially seal your box. This time capsule belongs to who and do not open until. So if you've got a kid, I would say between the ages of six and 10, maybe 12, this is such a fun thing to do at the end of the year. So this is our time capsule. So three ways for us to capture memories in 2020, our Christmas storybook, our family holiday card book, and this fun time capsule. All right, I'm gonna check on that pork really quickly, and then we're gonna move on to wrapping the perfect present. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love wrapping presents at the holidays, and I wanted to get a system in place. I currently live somewhere. It's kind of small, and so it's not the biggest house. And so I don't have a whole closet that I can dedicate to wrapping paper and ribbon and bags, and so I had to get creative and find a solution on Amazon to help me organize all of these things. And this is what I found. Check this out. Is this not the coolest? Ta-da! So, I have got my gift bags, my tags, my scissors, my tape all up here. More gift bags. I have my wrapping paper, my bigger spools of ribbon, and then my smaller spools of ribbon. This is a ribbon organizer um, that I found that's just really great because I can just pull and cut as I need ribbon. I have two of these because I really like ribbon. Um, and then I've got, what I like about this is this is suited for both shorter rolls and longer rolls of wrapping paper. So this, um, it's just a really great way to organize a bunch of little doodads, if I'm being honest. And I like to store this under my bed. It's such, it zips up so nice and easy. And while it's great for the holidays, this can be a wrapping station all year round, whether it's for wedding gifts or anniversary gifts or birthday gifts, that's how I plan to use it. So I will likely swap out some of that, or not even swap it out, likely use most of this holiday wrapping paper, and then bring in some more generic papers that I can use for other occasions. So this is really great. I mentioned these little boxes for organizing ribbon. Um, you can add, I think, up to 12 spools of ribbon, and this is um, a simple way to do that. I have two because I like ribbon so much, and I'm actually gonna pull one of these out, and we're gonna wrap a present together. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of tips for wrapping the perfect present. Um, I've got a couple of tips there. Feel free, you can screenshot that if you're looking to up your wrapping game this year. Um, the other thing I want to call out is that you guys remember, if you're enjoying the show, you can click that follow button to follow along as I do different episodes of How To Home. Every week will be kind of a different theme, and I'm really excited to kind of bring you this combo of a recipe, something for your home, something for your family, and something that's really fun. All right, so let me move this so that I can 
wrap this present. Gotta find the present. Here it is. All right. I don't know how you guys are doing on your holiday wrapping. I am getting there, but I'm certainly not all of the way there. But I almost enjoy This is really fun for me to do. You know what, you guys? I want to check that pork one more time. Remember how I told you we're looking for 140? Let me check it. And while I'm over here, I want to show you. These are my favorite type of oven mitts, all right? These are, they're like mini mitts almost. And because I've got those small hands, I really like using these. Oh, it's already looking so great. You guys can kind of see what that looks like. I'm gonna use my thermometer. Remember, we're looking for 140. And we're gonna see what this register's at. Oh my gosh, I'm at 138. So because of that, there's going to be a fair amount of carryover cooking that happens. So you're within a degree or two. I would just go ahead and leave it out. I'm gonna turn my oven off. Here we go. And while that rests, let's wrap our gifts. All right, so anytime you're wrapping a present, I find that a rectangular or a square box is typically the easiest. I like looking for paper that has grid lines on the back so that you can cut straight lines. Anytime you're measuring it, I typically cut it when it's still on the roll, but you'll just wanna make sure that it comes up on all of the sides needed. Now there's a couple of nifty tools where you can get tape dispensers that sit on your wrists or paper cutters um, and whatnot, but I find that most of the time you likely have what you need on hand to wrap a gift. So I typically pull up to the sides on top there and secure that. And when it comes to the side of a package, I always go in first and create a crease. In on my other side, create another crease. And if you really love gift wrapping like I do, you treat yourself to the thick paper because <laughs> it's a little easier to work with and it's so pretty. All right, so I'm essentially getting two triangles there. I'm gonna fold this one down and fold this one up. I have so many memories of wrapping gifts with my mother. She's such a beautiful gift wrapper. And um, from a very young age, I was on bow duty. So I've made a lot of bows in my day for Christmas gifts. Same thing on this side. We're gonna go in, create that crease on the bottom, create that crease on top. The other thing, I mentioned the, the rustic tip for cooking. I don't know about a rustic tip for wrapping, but what I do know is that a bow can hide a lot of mistakes. So if you're worried about your creases and your perfect folds and whatnot, a bow makes everything better and don't forget it. Okay, so now that I have got my wrapped box, let's talk about some ribbon. So you can either do a thicker ribbon, a thinner ribbon. I really love this velvet ribbon and I've actually linked this for you guys in green, but I think velvet ribbon is so beautiful. And I never realized what a great resource Amazon was for ribbon. Um, I have been getting all of my ribbon on Amazon lately. You'll see how I can just pull this out. And I wanna make sure that I'm going to have enough here. Oh, I'm almost to the bottom of the roll here. That looks about right. I like to cut on an angle. Taking this ribbon, goes up over the top, right along those creases in the back. Twist it at the top, pull tight. Do you guys ever have the job of being the finger that you tied the bow around? I can remember that as a little kid. Now here's, I did this on purpose, I wanna show you guys. Because there are times when you get like this and it's like, oh no, I don't have enough for a bow. That is okay. Actually, it's the first step to creating a more elaborate bow. So you want to just tie this off like this, excuse me, ever so tightly. And we could use, I'm going to clean up those edges. We could use more of this velvet ribbon, but since the package is red and white, I wanna incorporate some green. So you'll see I've got some really pretty green ribbon here. 
and I would want just enough to do a bow. So I'm gonna go under here, make it even at the top, and this is how I'll make my bow. So if you have enough length, by all means, you can go ahead and make your bow, but if not, never fear, just get another piece of ribbon and you can make a beautiful bow like so. And you can do one of two things. You can keep it long just like that or let's shorten it up just a little bit. Give it a haircut, if you will. And there you have it. Look how cute. Isn't that so fun? So, so simple. Now, I'm gonna undo this for just a second and I wanna show you one other trick. Whether it's the jingle bells that I had from my um, holiday table earlier or something else, you can incorporate whether it's a small thing of holly or it's some bells or it's an ornament. This is a fun way to incorporate a little flair. Maybe you have a gift you're wrapping up for someone that's extra special. And so you're gonna give them the bell treatment. Um, but this is really, really fun. Isn't that cute? So I've added those bells, really simple. And you could do that with all sorts of things. Another way, if you wanted to take a more simple approach to wrapping your gifts, twine is always a fun way to do it. This is definitely a more modern print on paper and you could add some twine, tying it just the way I showed you earlier. And it would be that fun balance of modern meets rustic. When it comes to tags, I am such a fan of, there's nothing wrong with a sticker tag, right? I like to keep both on hand. So I'll keep some sticker tags and then I keep some more beautiful tags as well if you want to do something like that. Um, but overall, wrapping gifts is so much fun. I love to do it while putting on a Christmas movie. Um, I like to do it with my husband, Robbie. Um, there's great debate about what we do and don't wrap in our home, but I am always in favor of more wrapping. I think it makes Christmas more fun and exciting to open things up. And now that you've got everything you need for an organized system, wrapping has never been easier. These ribbon things in particular have been so great. And it's a great way for me to save ribbon that I love. Um, you'll notice this is the ribbon that I used in the centerpiece for the holiday table. Um, you could also use this in, in wrapping gifts as well. So there you have it. We have wrapped gifts. We have made a very simple holiday meal. I wanna show you how I'd like to plate this up. And we've kind of ticked all the boxes for getting ready for holidays, right? All right, let me swap my ribbon, bring forward my Really beautiful. See what I mean about how that is just such a beautiful presentation. You really don't even need to transfer it to a serving dish, but because it's the holidays, I'm going to. Um, I like using just simple white platters. I find that having a couple of really great white platters is always a good thing to have on hand as a home cook. So I am going to first transfer. You'll notice that this cutting board has this side here and the ridge there is for any juices that may fall out or seep out if you will. Um, the pork has been resting for a few minutes and you want it to do that. If we cut into it right after it comes out of the oven, then you're gonna lose some of that moistness and that juiciness. I'm gonna use my tongs to transfer my pork here and we're gonna slice it. I wanna show you guys how I would first add my veggies. Remember, we've got the butternut squash, we've got the um, Brussels sprouts, we have the apples in there, and you'll notice all that caramelization is from that balsamic glaze. And because I used the sheet tray, the non-stick sheet tray, cleanup is going to be a breeze, and I didn't even have to pull out any tin foil or aluminum foil or parchment paper. 
This Nordic Wear nonstick baking sheet has been one of my favorite finds of the year. And what's so crazy is that after I clean this with a little soap and water, it will look like nothing had been cooked on it. Um, that's one thing about these baking trays um, or sheet trays. You won't want to put them in the oven. You'll want to hand wash them, but because they're nonstick, it's so easy to get that clean pan afterwards. All right, now that we have that, let's go ahead. I like using my tongs to hold my protein in place here. And I like using my nice sharp knife, cutting on an angle. Oh, it smells so good. I do nice thin slices and it's actually good that I'm not getting too much juice seeping out. That means that it's been retained in the meat. And by doing these thin slices like this, I'm just going to fan it out on the center of my platter. And then this can be something you take straight to your holiday table and it literally could not have been easier, yet it looks so beautiful and worthy of a holiday meal. I feel like this amount of pork would feed four to six easily, and you can do this exact same recipe um, with a second pork tenderloin. Lots of times they're sold together, so you could double the amount of people that you're serving. I'm just gonna create some space here and do the exact same recipe. Okay. You could do balsamic glazed chicken thighs, chicken breast. Really, you could do this um, if you had a beef tenderloin, that would also be delicious. But chicken's always a great way to go and most people do have that on hand. Um, but you'll see how once I sliced it thin like that, you can just fan it out and it looks so, so beautiful. Um, the last thing I would do is take some fresh rosemary sprigs because it's the holidays. And using this to just jazz things up a little bit is an easy way to elevate a dish. If this was a weeknight dinner, I might not do something like this, but because it's the holidays, it's a really easy way to make it look extra special. So there you have it, a sheet pan dinner that's easy enough for a weeknight, but elaborate enough for your holiday meal. Our table is set, it looks beautiful. We're gonna be able to transition it from Christmas to New Year's in no time. We've got those wonderful books to write down all of our holiday memories. And you're all set to go when it comes to wrapping a gift as well. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had a good time here on How To Home. Remember, you can click the follow button to follow me here on Amazon Live and be alerted when I share any of my How To Home episodes. You can also shop these products in the carousel below. I also have a shopping list um, on my Amazon shop page. So if you are looking for me and all of my Amazon favorites, you can simply search Kelsey Nixon Amazon shop page that will pop up and you'll see not only a list for this show, but you'll see all of my favorites when it comes to home decor, organizing my pantry, kitchen favorites, even some favorites when it comes to clothes. In fact, this sweater got on an Amazon along with my apron. So I have so enjoyed being with you guys today. I can't wait to do this again. We'll try to come to you weekly and thanks again. Happy holidays.